Welcome back on How to Shape a Longboard. This is part three where we're gonna be covering how to get your rocker in thickness correct. I'm gonna be using my Hitachi P20ST modified planer. And I'm gonna show you how to do all that with this thing right here. First, I like to bring my blank outside, lay it down on something flat where I can really get an idea of what the rocker's looking like. Um, if you can lay it down on a wall, concrete, anything flat. Since I like the rocker on the bottom of the blank, tip to tip on the underside, only going to be taking thickness off the deck in the nose, in the tail area, instead of pulling thickness from the bottom. Because right now, the blank is about three and a half inches thick, which is way too thick. I'm shooting for like two and three quarters. And so instead of coming from the bottom, and flattening it out and getting rid of thickness that way, I'm gonna take foam off the deck so that I keep the nose and tail rocker really well. Just as a reminder, when you hold your planer, you wanna wrap your arm around this cable, grab the planer of your one finger apart, and I like to get my hand on the knob like this and then tighten it around there so that you're not overextending your wrist, which will make it sore after a while. And then get it somewhere comfortable because you're gonna be holding this thing for a while. So I'm gonna start by scooping out a lot of the foam in the tail, which I'm gonna thin out the tail and start getting the deck rocker correct in the back. I'm doing this by starting in the middle, kind of, kind of the back third and going back towards the tail, opening up the planer the further I go back. As I keep making cuts, I'm gonna keep going further and further back, closer to the center of the board. And I do this because this is the only way you're gonna be able to keep these passes smooth and consistent going back with the rocker for the rest of the board. I try and keep these areas flat as I do this because the planer cuts flat and it's gonna be easier later to keep it symmetrical. Don't forget to keep looking at it, checking it out, making sure that you're not making a crazy lump, any crazy dips. And then as soon as I start moving towards the nose, same thing, starting from the center, working to the tips, and you can see I'm really making long passes now. And again, that's just to keep everything connected and smooth and keeping everything from getting lumpy, crazy, and ugly. So I got the blank to three and an eighth about, so I know I have quite a little bit more to go. I'm just gonna keep doing more of the same, blending the nose and the tail rocker together now and making sure that everything flows smooth. There's no lumps, dips, bumps, nothing. Those things are bad. And then again, just keep checking it out, making sure it's nice and smooth and check your thickness often. It's pretty common for beginners to over thin out their boards. I got mine to two and looks like 15, 16, something like that. Now I'm checking with level, making sure everything's good. And you know what? I did a pretty good job. I got the thickness and the rocker taken care of on the deck. And like I said before, I already really liked the rocker on the bottom of the blank, so I basically left that alone. Uh, I got the tail thinned out, so it's not thick at all in the back, but I did leave, as you can see, some thickness up here in the front because I'm going to do concave in this surfboard. From the middle point, which you should mark in the very beginning so that you know where your rocker should be approximately, uh, the axis of it should be at approximately. From that point up, I'm leaving 
extra foam because I'm doing a single blended concave in the nose of this board. If you're not doing a concave in the nose of your board, this would be the time, just like I did on the deck, use your planer to blend from the spot that is correct and blend out the extra foam that you don't want. So if you want to take rocker out of the bottom of the surfboard, what you would do is you'd use your planer and say you like the nose from here to here. You would take your planer and blend out the foam in the middle. So if you're taking foam out of the middle of the blank, you're going to be bringing it closer to the deck, thus flattening your rocker. If you want to add rocker, you're going to do the exact opposite. You're going to say you like the middle to right here. You're going to start taking foam out of the nose, blending it up. That's going to create more rocker. So if you want more rocker from the bottom, take it out of the nose, take the foam out of the nose and pull it up. And if you want less rocker on the bottom, leave the nose where it's at and take out the middle part. So for the deck, the way that would go is if you want uh, less rocker on the deck, you're going to take the foam out of the nose, so the opposite of the bottom. You're going to take it out so it's flatter. And then you're going to take out the rocker or the foam on the deck of the board in the tail if you want to lower the rocker. If you want the most possible deck rocker, leave the nose, leave the tail, but then scoop out the middle part. So just if you need to watch that a second time, listen to it to make sure you do it right, go ahead. But uh, yeah, so basically you're carving out the surfboard you're leaving the foam where you want it, and you're taking away the foam that you don't want. That's how you're gonna be adding rocker or subtracting rocker. So this photo, I keep it hung up on the back of my wall, not because I love to look at photos of myself surfing, but because this is the perfect example of where the water flows onto the deck of a longboard while you're nose riding. So I use this photo in order to shape the decks of my longboard. So earlier you saw me scooping a lot of foam off of the tail back here, that area, because if you see the water lands up on the deck of the board here and you want, or at least you don't have to, you can get lift in a lot of different ways, but I choose to get lift by adding concave and rocker on the deck of the surfboard in the tail. The reason I get lift on the deck in the tail of the surfboard is because when you walk up to the, or when you walk back to do a turn, you're not getting slowed down, unlike if you choose to get lift by adding roll and conk, or roll and rocker on the bottom of the tail of the surfboard. Your board's gonna be faster if you use the deck to get lift on your surfboard. It's gonna be slower if you use the bottom to get lift because it's always engaged in lifting. Thank you guys for watching. Next time we will be doing rails. This is going to be a very important step to watch. Uh, I'm going to show you a lot of good tricks on symmetry and you will be able to make surfboard rails that you can do a turn, you can nose ride, you can trim down the line, anything you want. I'll show you how to do it all in the next video. Make sure to subscribe so you do not miss it.